Welcome to the Embassy of Mike Graham. This is my heaven and my hell for this week. Have we had our fill? It's all everybody's been talking about this week. It's Holly and Phil. Yes, right, Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby on this morning, or not on this morning, or on bits of this morning, because apparently they're not speaking to each other. Holly doesn't speak to Phil anymore. Phil doesn't speak to Holly anymore. Uh, there's lawyers involved, there's producers involved, there's agents involved. All that anybody knows is that Phil is under a bit of a cloud. Nobody knows exactly why, but it did all start to go wrong, didn't it, when they jumped the queue uh, to look at the Queen's coffin in Westminster Hall all those months ago. Things have been going downhill ever since. And this week, they lost 170,000 viewers. Why? Because people don't like people who don't talk to each other doing shows where they talk to each other. It all looks a bit insincere. It all looks a bit like it's had its day. Uh, it's time to close down the operation. So can Phil last the weekend. Can Phil last next week? Everybody's asking the question. Nobody knows. But I think one thing is for sure. We have all had our Phil. And it will be heaven for us when he leaves. Noel looks back in anger. Did you see what Noel Gallagher had to say this week? He's not very happy. He's just got divorced uh, from his wife of 22 years. Uh, she was a PR woman, apparently. Uh, and he says it's all the fault of middle-aged white women that his two sons, his teenagers, don't know whether they're coming or going. He says they're so woke and they've been given all this wokery to deal with that they don't know what decision to make, they don't know how to talk to girls, they don't know what to do at school, and it's just a nightmare. But I've got some news for Noel Gallagher. I actually agree with him, but not about the white middle-aged woman bit. He's right to say that boys, particularly teenage boys, don't know whether they're coming or going, but it's the fault of the schools. The schools are the ones teaching them that they're all filled with male toxicity and toxic masculinity. You can just switch those words around. They don't know how to talk to their girlfriends. They don't know how to talk to their own friends. They don't know whether they're coming or going. They don't know whether to change their gender or stick with the one they've got or go completely non-binary. So, Noel, you've got it right, but you've got to roll with it, man. Stop it. Find yourself an oasis of calm, and then you'll be in heaven. Sick note Britain. So apparently, two and a half million people are too sick to go to work. Not just because they've got a cold, not just because they've got something wrong with their stomach, not because they've got a headache, but because they've got something really, really, really badly wrong with them. And you know what it is? It's called malingering. It's called not wanting to work. It's called working from home. Apparently loads of people have got long COVID or some kind of long mental health issue or some kind of long problem with travelling to work. I don't believe a single word of it. Of course there are people who can't go to work. Of course there are people who are genuinely anxious. And of course there are people who are genuinely unwell. But there's not two and a half million of them surely to heavens apparently the big problem is working from home you don't do enough exercise you don't get enough proper positioning for your support system you get a bad back you stay in bed too long you watch too much tv get back to work for heaven's sake or else it'll be hell for all of us thanks for the memories Apparently Tom Hanks wants to live forever. He's not really going to live forever, but he wants to live forever on celluloid, although of course it's not even called that anymore, on digital technology, because apparently AI is going to make it possible uh, for Tom Hanks to stay in the movies even after he's dead. But there's a bit of a problem. They did that show, didn't they, that Christmas show, Polar Express, in which he was kind of animated. It was probably the worst film he's ever made. I prefer Tom Hanks actually alive, and I prefer him actually acting uh, in something that he's actually speaking. I don't want to see Tom Hanks for the rest of time. And by the way, isn't it a bit unfair on young actors coming through? If Tom Hanks has got a lock on one of the big studios and he keeps making millions and millions and millions of dollars for his family and for his estate, then how are the newcomers ever going to get a role? I think it's wrong. I think Tom Hanks should die when he dies and then finish acting when he dies. We don't want to see him post-death, do we? I think that would be hell. Out of this world. How do you fancy flying through space to Australia? Sounds a bit tricky to me. I'm not sure I'd like it. But apparently, somebody's come up with a plan where you can take um, a plane of some description uh, very, very high up into space and then back down again to Sydney, Australia in two hours. I mean, I don't know about you, but flying is bad enough at the moment. And when you do fly a long way, if it's an overnight flight or it's a six-hour flight, you get a bit of jet lag. Imagine flying all the way to Sydney in two hours. You'd probably have to take a week off to recover, wouldn't you? And what about the G-force? 
you know, your stomach would be left behind somewhere near Austria, uh, and your eyes would probably fall out somewhere over um, Java. I don't know. I don't fancy it. I think it would be hell. So that was this week's Heaven and Hell. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on the Embassy of Micro.